Hey everyone, this is Ross, and in today's video, I wanted to talk to you guys about growing figs at the beach. I'm here at my parents' place at the Joysy Shore, and they are growing figs. Um, we planted this tree behind me here. This is a Marseille Black VS, and it's a hardy Chicago type. This is probably the hardiest fig that exists, and even though they live here on a location that is really close to the bay, really close to the water, um, they're also right on the coast of Jersey, so they have a lot of heat from that, that ocean that brings in these warm fronts, really keeps things uh, warmer in the wintertime. So a lot of fig trees, believe it or not, on the island or along the Jersey Shore survive. And they actually do really well. Not only do they survive because of the warmer temperatures, but if you guys kind of inspect the soil here, it's really quite different than growing figs uh, back in Philadelphia. The soil is really sandy and it's really well draining. In fact, my dad is right now behind me watering different things because they just don't do well. I mean, look at this. This is a horrible looking spruce tree that without the right water, it gets this horrible coloring to it. So because these trees just don't get enough water, because we have sandy soil, uh, it's actually the perfect environment for growing a fig because they don't grow. And if you look here at this tree, I mean, it's gonna grow in time, but look how old this tree is. I think it was already maybe two or three years old when we planted this. And now I think it's been through two or three winters now? Two winters. Two winters, so uh, that means this tree is probably four years old and this is last year's growth here. And then all you see now is these browner shoots that have already lignified, already hardened up. The tree has stopped growing, we pinched it, and you can see it's got fruits on it. And that's really what you want here. You don't wanna be feeding your trees, you don't wanna be over watering them. This is the perfect condition to be growing your figs. Yeah, it's gonna be small. Yeah, you're gonna complain and you're gonna say, well, why isn't my fig tree growing? You know, that's kind of what us as Americans expect out of our trees and what my parents actually have been saying to me, why isn't the fig tree growing? But the truth of the matter is, we want to make sure this thing's actually growing slowly and that's how fruit trees work. When they grow slower, they fruit heavier. When they grow slower, in the case of the fig, not only do they fruit, maybe not as heavy, you know, because if you had maybe a little bit more nitrogen, if we gave this tree a bit more nitrogen, in the spring, it would probably put out more growth, you get more figs. However, it's gonna survive the winter really well because of that. And I talked about in a recent video here about lignification, getting these branches to lignify in time. And if they lignify up really well, that's gonna aid in their winter survival. Whereas the opposite, if you guys remember from other videos I've done, my trees are just growing like crazy back in Philadelphia. Because we have that heavy soil that holds lots of water, that has lots of nutrients, it's just the total opposite here. And you can see we put a bird net on it because it's actually very close to being ripe, some of these figs. I would say on this tree that's now been in the ground for, I think this is now its third summer. Um, potentially, I think it's its third summer here or second summer, something like that. It's actually got about 20 figs on it. I think that's pretty reasonable. Very soon, this is really gonna take off. It's gonna really root itself up well in the ground here, and it's gonna grow much more vigorously. We won't have to feed it. I think doing this off the right start now, not feeding it, not watering it. You can see my dad came over here, watered you know these, these evergreen trees, the day lilies, different things. We don't water this, completely neglected. We put down the stones, get that extra heat here. We got it on the Western exposure, right? The sun's setting now to my left, which is west. Um, you know, what else can I mention to you guys about this? I mean, this is just legitimately a really perfect environment. Oh, the one other thing is that on the island, it's 7B. So or on the Jersey Shore, most of the Jersey Shore, at least in the southern half of Jersey, is 7B. Because it has that water microclimate from the ocean that brings in that warm front, even for miles, um, inland, you know, you get that scenario where this is actually in 7B and that's really the cutoff for these trees. So, 
you know, back in Philadelphia, man, it's only 7A. So it's really life or death every winter time. 7B, you're looking at maybe five degrees Fahrenheit. And then also if it hits five, it's gonna be such a mild five for a short period of time, it's not gonna affect these trees. And it's, it's probably gonna be more gradual as well. So believe it or not, on the island, there is a ton of these trees all over the island. There's all kinds of Italians, even um, different people from different cultures growing these figs. If I just even look down the alleyway here in the back, uh, if I go down one street, there's a fig. If I go down to the beach, there's figs. I mean, um, it's kind of crazy actually. Um, and I've seen a number of figs that are probably in the range of 10 years old, maybe even 20 years old, that are huge, that are loaded with 500 figs a piece. So if you wanted to do this and you wanted to do it right, you kind of kind of have to replicate the conditions that I'm talking about here. And it's just, it's just kind of different growing figs at the beach. And the one other thing I want to mention now before I let you guys go is that because it's such a sandy soil, we really try to plant this actually a bit higher and that's maybe counterproductive, but because we planted it higher, it's getting more heat, right? The ground's warming up quicker in the spring. It's also warmer, you know, at this time of the year. But we amended the soil really heavily. We added in a lot of organic material, stuff that's gonna hold that water so that we don't have to water this at all, you know? Um, and then of course, we added actually some mulch and that was a big mistake. But now we've got the rocks, definitely increasing the soil temperatures in here. It's actually not too warm um, for this time of day, but you know, that's it guys. That's all I, you know, I even planted a tree today for the neighbor, um, little old Italian woman that we love and we got a tree over there for her. And that's exactly how we did it. How we planted this is putting this tree actually a bit above grade, covering it with some nice organic compost or worm casting, something like that. And then putting the rocks on top. And this is what her tree is going to look like, um, a couple years from now. And, Hopefully sooner than later, this thing's really going to take off um, from this neglect and it's going to keep surviving these winter times and it's going to get to a huge size. I would say probably by the fourth year this tree's in the ground, it's really going to be something special. So again, we've only got about 20 figs on here, something like that. But what's awesome is that they're really close to getting ripe figs. I mean, we're talking about maybe 10 20 days, 25 days at most. I think we, when my parents came over here and pinched this, it was calculated out. I think for this variety, it's only like 75-ish days after pinching. And I think that, that puts us sometime in mid-August to early September. So they're actually looking at figs very soon. You can already tell by these figs on here, um, these hardy Chicago types. They actually look pretty far advanced. So yeah. They're going to be enjoying figs for years, and this is pretty much the perfect, even got it against the house. We totally forgot about that. And I really wanted to kind of protect it from the wind. This is the air conditioning units. And that was the whole idea with these spruce trees was to get them large enough as well so that they can block some of this wind on either side. But that hasn't obviously worked out. But uh, yeah, anyway, guys, thank you for watching this one. And yeah, we'll talk to you all soon. Take care. We'll see you for tomorrow's video.